Now, the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth stakes, the Kipco stakes indeed, is a Breeders' Cup win and you're in event. What does that mean? Well, what it means is, quite simply, what it says. You get automatic entry into the Breeders' Cup turf. How likely is that to happen where you go, well, greats like Galileo, Grundy, Shergar, Dancing Brave, Nashwan, Lamtara, Manger and Breeders' Cup heroine Enable have won the King George. $30,000 entry fees paid by the Breeders' Cup. You get $10,000 awarded to the nominator and $40,000 travel fund for horses stable outside Kentucky. So, there's a big incentive if you win the Breeders' Cup, if you win the King George, to head to the Breeders' Cup turf. It's on November the 7th at Keeneland. Let's give you the runners and riders this year for the King George VI and Queen Elizabeth Kipco Stakes. Number one is Broom. The jockey is Ryan Moore. Aidan O'Brien, the trainer, won the Harbwick last time and might get an uncontested lead. Number two is Mistriff, new jockey. David Egan replaced by James Doyle, the Jubmont International winner for John and Thady Gosden. Number three is Pile Driver. PJ McDonald gets the sit for the first time for William Muir and Chris Grassick, a Coronation Cup hero. Torquato Tasso was the shock winner of the Prix de l'Arte de Triomphe in heavy ground for René Pichelec and Marcel Weiss. Can the horse win on good to firm? Westover, unlucky in the derby at Epsom, made no mistake in the Irish equivalent. Colin Keane tries to win his first race at Ascot. And Emily Upjohn was unlucky in defeat in the Epsom Oaks, missed the Irish equivalent, and now comes here under Frankie de Tory, who tries to match and go one better than Lester Bigot. Having matched him with seven, King George wins now goes for eight. The betting sees that Irish Derby winner Westover as a short price favourite at six to four. Why is he a short price? Because he gets eleven pounds from the older horses. Emily Upjohn gets a stone because she's a filly and a three-year-old at five to two. And then the older horses include Mishrif, Torquato Tassa, Broom and Power Driver, ranging from 130 to 28 to one. Let's have a word on some of the leading contenders then. Let's start with Westover, who began this campaign at Sandown with a terrific win in the classic trial there. The form has stood up. He then went to Epsom and finished third when he didn't quite have the pace to take gaps when they came. And he was blocked in his run. He would have finished a clear second to Desert Crown with a decent run. Then went to Ireland in a desperate renewal of the Irish Derby and hacked up there. In the colours of Jub Monty Farms, there's Rafe Beckett, the trainer. Colin Keane is the jockey. Emily Upjohn. Similar type of profile. You could argue she should be unbeaten. She won three times on the trot, was brilliant at York in the Musidora. Went to Epsom for the Oaks and stumbled out the stools. And then I think it's fair to say could have been given a better ride in the closing stages. She was eventually touched off by Tuesday, who was well beaten by Westover in the Irish Derby. But she's very good. She gets a stone. Just a case of whether the Phillies are quite as good as the Colts. One last look at the betting then. Westover at 6-4. to four. Emily Upjohn at 5-2. to two. Mistriff at 130. Torquato Tasso at 12s. I don't think it's impossible Broom can cause an upset at 25-1. to one. And Par Driver as 28 to 1. And of course, Broom would be an appropriate winner of this race because he's a horse who has finished second in a Breeders' Cup turf to the brilliant Yabir.